Welcome back to Inside City Hall. More than 400,000 New Yorkers live in buildings run by the New York City Housing Authority, with thousands more receiving assistance from the agency, mostly in the form of Section 8 vouchers. But the agency has been plagued by a seemingly endless series of daunting problems, especially a lack of funding to keep up with even basic infrastructure needs. My next guest is trying to come up with a new and sustainable vision for our city's next generation of public housing. She's joining us now to talk more about it. The chair of the New York City Housing Authority, Shola Olatoye, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Good to see you, Errol. Thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, now, there was, um, you, you testified before the city council earlier this week, mm -hmm. and it was a, a sort of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. I mean, the good news was that for the first time in a long time, you actually closed the operating deficit or it didn't get any bigger last year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the good news. Right. The bad news is it's set to open up to the tune of uh, over $100 million again this year. Correct, correct. You know, I think it's, it, it, while it has been uh, a, a, a tremendous year given the significant support that the de Blasio administration has given to the New York City Housing Authority and really made public housing a, a priority for this administration, it, it, it cannot sort of, uh, it, it, it still remains such a challenge mm -hmm. given the significant federal disinvestment in public housing writ large. And so as you're absolutely right, last year we were able to uh, close our operating deficit um, through our own resources, but as you said, project to have a $98 million deficit going forward mm -hmm. in 2015. And what's even more interesting when you when you sort of look at look at that over a 10 year period, um, projecting more than a $425 million mm -hmm. operating deficit if nothing changes. So, well, well, but I mean, can you explain this to me? Because I, 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 I've heard this so many times from you, your predecessor, his predecessor. Mm -hmm. um, does Congress specifically create a formula that does not cover the, the cost of, of, of public housing? That's I mean, a, that's exactly right. Earl. I mean, that's, that's exactly got to be right. by design, though, right? What, what's the theory behind so that? So there, there is. We, we are funded through a proration, uh, a, pro, a proration uh, amount or percentage, mm -hmm. um, and then there's a formula that that is uh, established by Congress, and and then HUD, the HUD applies the proration mm -hmm. uh, uh, amount to that. And it, you're absolutely right, it does not cover the actual expenses that, that um, it takes to run the New York City Housing Authority. So, so there's it, always, so, so last year, mm -hmm. it was approximately 88%. So that's 88, 88 of $100. Right. So you're all, from, from the beginning, you're right out. Well, why, why 88 and not, you know, 98 or 108, like, yeah. or, or 58? What, what, do they specifically, is there some theory behind this that Congress and HUD there think? Is a, there is a, there, there was a study done, um, or, in the in the early 90s that the Congress does use to to as a basis for um, for that formula that it, that takes takes into account operating expenses etc but then you also have to realize that um, we are part of a national public housing system and mm. so um, while while by far we are the largest and represent um, certainly uh, the the largest in potentially the most distressed mm. in the sense of our, our financial and, and capital needs, um, that formula remains in, 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 insufficient for our needs. When, when you go to uh, different conferences and you meet with your counterparts mm -hmm. from, you know, Newark, Chicago, Puerto sure. Rico, Los Angeles, uh, are, are you all singing the same, uh, the same blues? We are. I will say it, other cities have taken a different approach than New York has. Mm -hmm. um, and I, while I think that there are certainly some lessons to learn from our colleagues across the country, um, namely how they have sought to um, preserve their public housing while also developing new communities. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that New York has a very unique model in that there's a real commitment to uh, the historical notion of public housing. Mm -hmm. That really hasn't been the case across the country. Sure. Um, really using, when you look at what Congress is funding, it is the Section 8 program. Uh -huh, and so uh -huh. that is what housing authorities are using uh, to support their public housing portfolios. And really, as Section 8 funding goes up, public housing funding continues to go down. Gotcha. And so, you know, we have chosen a different path here Interesting. in New York. Interesting. Um, and and uh, on the, the Section 8 front, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember being there the day that they announced five years ago that basically there will be no more vouchers. Right. And people who had even received vouchers were mm -hmm. told, sorry, that commitment uh, has expired. Um, there's some good news on that front, right? Right. We are, you know, 
for the first time in five years, uh, we saw a, a, an increase in our um, allocation amount for the Section 8 program, mm -hmm. um, which is the country's largest Section 8 program. And effectively for us, it's a pass-through program. That goes directly out to New Yorkers um, in need mm -hmm. of critical affordable housing. And so we are able, because of that increase uh, in uh, our, our amount from HUD, we will actually begin to issue new vouchers. Mm -hmm. You will recall that back five years ago, the Housing Authority actually had to rescind a number of vouchers that were yes. on the street. So for many families, approximately 900 families, um, they received a you know terrible letter saying that, I'm sorry, we're unable to provide you with a Section 8 voucher. So we have to first go back to those families, make sure that to see if they okay, still so have the need. they're at the front of the line. They're yeah. at the front of the yeah. line. That's okay. according to HUD's rules and, 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 mm -hmm. and law. And then um, we're working closely with the administration to develop a plan for the remaining, um, for the remaining remaining okay, vouchers. Very good. Um, going back to the, the, the brick and mortar yes. uh, section of your portfolio, uh, you've had some visioning sections at the Van Dyke Houses, yes. Millbrook Houses, the Ingersoll Houses, uh, where you've been meeting month by month. Did you personally attend any of those? I, I mean, what, what was going on I here? did. So, so at the beginning, when the mayor appointed me, he gave me two charges. The first, he said, is you have to reset a series of relationships, name, starting first with our residents, our employees, our community partners, elected officials. And the second, it was to come up with a sustainable plan to ensure that NYCHA was around for another generation. Easy, right? <laughs> so I said, um, we began to realize that we needed to fundamentally change the conversation that we were having with our residents and change how we were engaging with our residents. And so we partnered with some community organizations, community-based organizations, and uh, began a series of conversations that were really, that were independently led, so it wasn't NYCHA staff leading them, and it really was about what's the vision for your community, mm -hmm. not what's the vision for your building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was what's your vision for your community, and over the course of, beginning last summer, over the course of three meetings in each of those, uh, in each of those developments, more than a thousand people came out. And what has been even more interesting from the sort of big meetings is they now have broken into their own uh, work groups. And so, for example, the residents of Ingersoll Houses decided that grocery service delivery was incredibly important for them, for sure. the seniors. And so two sprightly young women went across the street to the local grocery store and said, you should deliver to Ingersoll. Well, not only did they win that, but they were able to uh, win grocery, st grocery delivery for the entire development. So it was both in a way in which to I didn't let people realize that they have a role in the kind of community they uh -huh. want, but then also to help identify the needs um, for, for our plan going forward. What were the critical issues that they were addressing? Of course, maintenance and repair issues, safety and security, employment opportunities for young people, services for more than a third of our residents who are over the age of 62. Mm -hmm. So our plan, uh, Next Generation NYCHA, which is both the process and the plan, mm -hmm. lays out a fundamentally different way of how we will operate, how we will be funded, and what we'll look like. And th th there's a key um, stakeholder in all of that, which is, of course, your staff. Yes. And um, many, if not all of them, are unionized. Yes. Um, I noticed in your testimony that you said about 23-odd uh, percent of your, 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 your budget uh, deals with just the health and benefit and other benefits for the workforce. Is that a conversation um, that's going to sort of uh, be included? Or is, is, are there going to be some changes there, some efficiencies, any kind of thing? You know, you know, the Housing Authority, like, you know, many of the city agencies, you know, is, is, is you know, we have a large represented workforce. Um, we are in active collective bargaining conversations, and that's, those are conversations that will continue um, with the goal of improving the quality of life for our residents, 23% of whom are employees, mm -hmm. um, but ultimately to ensure that our 11,000 employees um, are part of the solution to make NYCHA not only a quality place to live, but a safe place to work. Uh -huh. I mean, well, yeah, whenever I talk to those folks, they, they have a million different sort of uh, suggestions about inventory and staffing and, and, and we've and been else. And what's been so fascinating is that we've engaged them in the next generation NYCHA process. Mm -hmm. And so, which, is, which has been a really different way of engaging with our staff. So I started something called Coffees with the Chair that, we, that allows us to, allows me off the record conversations with staff up and down the organization um, and we talk about everything from as you said whether it be inventory to contracting to 
issue. And all of those ideas have been both incorporated and helped to shape mm -hmm. um, our plan, which uh, the mayor will be announcing later this later next month. Okay. Um, in our in our last minute, um, the mold big yes. series in the New York mm -hmm. Daily News uh, about um, the the problems, much of which came after uh, Hurricane Sandy, although not all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the plan to to re remediate that to address that? So look, one of the the, the major and the major challenge for us is, and frankly for any landlord, is water. It, it is the it's the it's the scourge of any landlord, and for a landlord that represent that is the largest. Uh, residential landlord in New York City and half of our buildings are over the age of 50 years old. We have huge, huge capital needs, $16 billion in uh, capital needs just for the next five years. And so our challenge is not only to um, ensure that the daily quality of life is happening, but that we are fundamentally addressing the root issues. So I'm so pleased that um, resources from the state and, 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 and the city as well will help, will focus on um, those kinds kinds of investments, capital investments, mm -hmm. like roof replacements, which have a direct correlation to mold, paint, tile, work orders. We've seen that when you replace a roof, something like 30 to 40 percent of your work orders in those particular areas actually decrease. Uh -huh. So our resources are really being, are, we're really working to be much more strategic with the capital dollars that we get so that it's not just about dealing with the mold issues. It's about really creating healthy communities. And, 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 and the wonderful byproduct is you've addressed the root cause. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. We will be eagerly awaiting uh, the, the, next NYCHA, uh, the next generation NYCHA yes. plan. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, real uh, pleasure. Okay, we're gonna take a short break now and straight ahead, Governor Cuomo is back from Cuba, but what did our state get out of that trip? We're gonna talk about free trade and more with Howard Zemsky of the Empire State Development. Stay with us.